Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown, this time featuring Jeremy Skinner from Absolute MMA going over his match against Ono Flanagan from Polaris. Thanks to Matt for letting me use the footage. In this breakdown, you'll see Jeremy go over how he was looking to set up leg locks himself and also counter leg locking a guy who is well known for his leg locks in Ono Flanagan. Guys, if you enjoy any of these breakdowns, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe. There's some really, really cool names coming up and having more subscribers helps for me to get bigger guys. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Alrighty, so with this match, um, started off on the feet. Uh, most uh, matches I go into, I'll generally be looking at pool guard just because when we're looking at uh, super fights in sub only format, um, a lot more submission options available uh, from the seated position. Um, but I thought with this match, it'd be good just sort of straight away um, uh, looking to try and uh, harass snapdowns and collar ties on Owen to see if he'd maybe pull guard first just to sort of. Uh, uh, see what sort of offense I could amount from top positions because I know Owen's got quite a strong guard. But um, Owen, uh, just because this match, uh, Owen's uh, quite uh, taller than me. He was able to actually get the better of me in terms of uh, reaching for head control straight away. So I decided to pull guard. More or less, he did to me what I was aiming to do to him. Um, so from here, um, I'm looking to try and harass his feet and make sure that he stays down on his knees because um, it's going to make it easier for me to tie it with his upper, upper body. So if we pause here for a second. So what I'm doing with my, my right foot there is generally it's trying to st uh, keep it tucked to my, to my butt uh, from there. So it's difficult for Owen to step inside and separate my feet because from there it gives him some really solid passing options. So you can see right there my legs are almost crossed over with my right foot tucked right to my butt. Yeah, so it means if Owen steps inside of my left leg at all, um, it means he doesn't actually have any inside position. So even though he's inside of my left leg, he, um, he hasn't actually separated my feet, which means that he doesn't have any options to attack my own legs from the top. It makes it harder for him to start a, a mount, uh, his own passing. And it makes it easy for me to gain inside position on his legs here. Now, what I do is I open up from this position with my right foot, looking to harass his feet. Um, and the idea from here is to either force him to open up his legs so I can attack him or um, to sort of make him feel unsteady on his feet and make him drop down to his knees. So as soon as I started harassing him with my right foot there, he dropped immediately down to his knees and it made it easy for me to go straight into a, a double underhooks. So what I did was I went for a double shoulder post here to drive in and then take double underhooks. But he did a really good job there of framing on my face. Now if we back out again, same position, looking to use my left hand to make sure he can't control my top leg there. Again, looking to harass his feet here so I can force him to drop down and he does so uh, again. And straight away, I'm looking to drive him for a shin to shin here. I'm looking to snap him down again and uh, make an angle so I can slide into a single leg X. And from here, I was able to do so. Uh, so Owen was able to roll over on top there for Kimura, but couldn't get much purchase on it. And straight away here when he stands, if you pause for a second, single leg X. Um, it's a position that's really good to transition from, but it's also quite easy to defend. So from, from here, Owen's immediately looking to separate my outside leg from his hip here, just looking to grip break that. Because my legs aren't supporting each other, it's really easy for him to do so. So instead, I opted to switch to uh, an outside ashy, which means taking my right leg, my inside leg there, and taking it outside his hip and looking to, to have my legs reinforce each other. And it puts me in a position where um, I can hold that, that leg entanglement for a much longer period of time than, say, if I was playing from a single leg X. Um, so if we keep going. Yeah, so from here, immediately switching to an outside action, because now I can hold this position much easier. But then from here, I look to switch straight away uh, to a saddle, taking his leg across. Um, and this gave Owen a really good opportunity here to sort of back straight out, just because um, I rushed that a little bit. From here, I'm looking to follow up, either getting control of either one of his legs, but Owen did a really good job of keeping both knees cleared, and then he followed straight back up to his passing. Uh, we'll pause for a second. So again, um, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not super used to um, having partners that have got such uh, good reach on me, and so from here, when uh, I locked up a Z-guard on Owen, I'm, I'm generally quite comfortable um, grip fighting from here, but Owen did a really good job with his right hand there, reaching over and grabbing my hips of the... Uh, when again. So from here, uh, when he reaches over, he takes a tight waist grip in his right hand, and this is going to allow him to um, put a fair bit of pressure on my top leg. So he's going to move his right hand off my knee hip there, and he's going to reach over, almost like a body lock type pass. 
and he was doing a really good job there because it gave him a, a really good chance to put quite a fair bit of pressure on me. So from here, I didn't want to settle into a, a regular half guard, so immediately I looked to pump my foot, and right there, I'm taking an underhook with my right hand, just on the other side there. And so what I'm looking to try and do is um, attack a choy bar on his far arm there, the one that's uh, nearest to my head. I'm looking to just frame against his face there and trying to bring his, his left elbow as high as possible towards my head, while at the same time looking to pummel my feet so I can elevate his hips. So just looking to try and attack his upper body and his lower body at the same time. But he did a really good job there of switching his hips. Uh, if we pause for a second, sorry. Um, so from here, um, it got to a certain point where when I went past my guard, I really didn't want to sort of expose myself to uh, any sort of upper body attacks. So from here, immediately looking to just try and bring my elbows uh, inside there and not expose me in speaking to attack, which ended up meaning that he was able to switch straight to a mount. But I'd rather that than him actually... Uh, you know, sort of get any purchase on any limbs. Um, just because this is a southern only match, so I didn't want to take that sort of risk. So again, looking to keep my elbows inside, and then he pops up to a knee on belly, switching straight to a mount, but making sure I keep my elbows inside. And straight away from mount, I'm looking to pump my feet inside of Owen's feet here while looking to frame up underneath his shoulders so I can get my hands to his hips. The main escape we're looking for from here is a kipping mount escape all looking to frame so I can clear my knees uh, either uh, against his knees there on either side. So from here, I'm looking to separate my feet inside of uh, Owen's feet here. And this is going to really give me the opportunity to try and bridge so that way I can set up frames underneath his hips. But first, I've got to win the upper body battle as well. So I'm looking to pummel my feet simultaneously while fighting that upper body battle while Owen's trying to attack a head and arm choke from here. And the upper body battle being double underhooks with your arms, right? Exactly, yeah. So so typically what we'll try and do is make C-grips in the armpits there, just to try and bring his weight um, above my head, and then bring my hands down to his hips there. So I was able to get my hands to his hips, and because he was um, taller than me, it actually was quite easy to get my elbows underneath my hands as well, so I can build strong frames. But again, from there, just looking to go back to that C-grip in his armpit, just to bring him off my head, and then from there, building that frame underneath. But that, that initial attempt there at trying to do the uh, keeping mount escape failed just because I hadn't separated his feet from there. So even though I had that frame underneath his hips, I still need to get his feet separated with my feet from here. So again, the idea with uh, trying to separate our feet is when our partner's great finding our legs like that, I'm going to extend my leg. Uh, so say, for example, if I were to free my right leg, I'd extend my right leg out to the right. And then use it to come across and step on my uh, my partner's ankle on the opposite side there, typically. Your right to his and, you know, right as well. Exactly, yeah. So my right foot there is looking to try and strip his hook um, underneath my left leg there. And then from there, because I was able to get my feet inside, but he started lifting his weight up off me, which made it easy for me to try and keep him away. Then, so. Uh, so from here, Owen, I, I was keeping my feet, uh, trying to keep my feet uh, tucked to my butt here, but Owen did a really good job of uh, stepping inside and separating my feet here. So I, I, as I'm switching my feet, uh, in transition there, he stepped inside with his right leg. So I just looked at a barren bowler from there. But Owen did a really good job of keeping his hips glued to the mat. And then from there, switching to a scoop, so that way I can try and attack a K-guard injury, similar to what my coach Lachlan uh, did at ADCC. Yeah. So again, backing away this time, trying to be a little bit more diligent with keeping my feet tucked to my butt, and now I grab the inside of his knee here. So if we pause for a second. So from that standing position there, when I take my right hand and grip on the inside of his knee, I'm looking to go uh, use it to pull myself straight into a single leg X. But I did a, a good job here, and immediately what he did was he dropped his hip straight to the mat. So I switched my grip so my left hand was grabbing around his calf, and I was playing from a shin to shin. My right hand gives a, a shove to his shoulder there, and this off balances it backwards gives me the entry inside to a single leg X and immediately looking to switch across to a saddle from here. So the grip I'm using from here, it's it's to try and slow down Owen's turn. So, so I'm looking to use my two hands here, uh, holding just the inside of Owen's foot there. So this will slow down his roll. Um, but Owen did a really good job there about keeping his foot point and relieving pressure in his knees so he could still keep turning and hiding his heel. So from here, what I look to do is switch to an outside ashy again and looking to secure his, uh, his lower leg uh, with an over wrap grip. So as we look to roll through here, just switching my leg position to an outside ashy, looking to wrap up on his calf immediately. So from here, Owen's clearing his knee, and what I'm doing is I'm driving off the front of his shin with my legs to pressure his ankle there, and this allows me to draw his knee back in, 
And then immediately I'm looking to um, attack his heel. But Owen started straight away looking to attack my feet and turn. And doing a good, uh, good job, sir. Uh, from here, um, I switched his leg across to a 50-50. But then again, I'll include his knee. Just to switch things up a little and coming up on top. Uh, just to sort of see uh, what Owen's guard's like. So from here, looking to try and cover his knuckles when I can, when we're good fighting. Uh, so if we pause for a second. So so when we're trying to make grips on our partners, um, when we're looking to try and like fight like a hand fighting game, um, whether on top or bottom, um, we're looking to immediately try and cover over the front of our partner's hands there, pretty much just trying to like uh, cover his knuckles. And this is really going to slow down our partner's ability to make grips on us while giving us an opportunity to make grips on them. Uh, so if we keep going. So from here, looking to circle my hands inside from here and starting to separate Owen's feet. Uh, but he's doing a really good job of keeping his feet on the inside, playing almost from a shin to shin, and taking this two-on-one grip here, uh, looking to elevate me overhead uh, into a single leg X, or potentially to even steer me and try and take my back. So from here, he's using um, a reverse butterfly to try and maybe attack an ankle lock, um, and then switching to a single leg X. From here, though, uh, we should feel pretty comfortable defensively uh, from a single leg X, just because there's not too many strong options our partner has from here. So from a counter leg locking perspective, if our partner takes a single leg X, it actually really gives us a good opportunity to attack them in turn because they're going to have to transition out of there. And uh, when our partners look to make transitions, that's generally when we're also able to map counter attacks of our own. So again, Owen does a really good job here with this two on one. Uh, he's got quite a strong grip from here. Um, so just looking at cross shoulder frame uh, from here, because that means his only real option from here is to potentially switch to a two on one on that arm. And again, when our partners start making transition, that gives us an opportunity to counter. And from then, Owen separates my feet again, uses that to go towards a single leg X. So ideally from here, what I wanted to do was pull his head forward and put him on his back, but he was quick off the mark there and straight away elevated me uh, and straight into a single leg X, which was quite good. Um, so from there, I started fishing for an Aoki lock on his outside leg, but he kept his foot tucked to his butt, which was good. And then from here, my goal is to try and free one of my legs, just because while he's controlling both my legs, it's really difficult for me to escape and try and counterattack in any way. So from there, I was able to clear my right leg, but then I will pull it straight back in. But from here, I don't really want Owen backing out, because because I'm quite comfortable with my, uh, my counter leg lock offense, I don't want him backing out. So, but sometimes just trying to weave underneath uh, his inside leg there and keep him drawn into the position. But from there, countering his single leg X with potentially a bolo attempt. Um, but again, Owen stays quite heavy on his hips, so it's hard to try and burst through it all. And then from here, using that bolo attempt to try and set up a scoop de la Hiva, potentially to try and switch towards a K guard again. Now we're playing from an R guard, switching to a scoop again. Again, looking to try and switch towards a K guard. But Owen does a really good job of trying to draw my inside leg into a single leg X. Straight away there, I was attacking the Aoki lock, just to sort of get my, my uh, opponent to open up. And then from here, Owen's doing a similar thing to what I was doing at the start of the match. So he was in a single leg X, feeling like he couldn't retain it. So switching to an outside Ashi to make it a little bit easier. But because he's not able to actually have his outside leg supporting his inside, um, it's really easy for me to separate his foot to the outside there. If we go back probably about five, six seconds. So because I was able to separate Owen's leg um, and not let it go to the outside there, I was able to make my own grip on his leg and then use my left foot to clear both of my feet to the outside from here. So we're going to attack his feet straight away. Then from here, um, switching uh, to a variation of cross ashy. So just going towards some type of 50-50 or saddle variation, um, just to sort of mix things up a little bit. And this is where the finish came in. So if we go back about uh, a couple of seconds. So earlier in the match, uh, when I had an outside, actually, I was dragging Owen's leg across and then trying to switch my foot to the inside. Um, this time, Owen got a, a really good grip on my inside leg there, but I was still persistent on uh, dragging his leg across just to attack from a 50-50 because I'm quite confident for that. And then the way that we got the finish from there is dragging his leg across, and while Owen was worried about uh, just wrapping up on my leg uh, and drawing his own knee out to the inside, I believe he was trying to switch towards uh, some type of inside, actually. So just dragging his leg across here and then using my left hand to keep his knee drawn in so he can't pull his leg out. So, so right there, right hand's holding his foot, left knee's, uh, left hand's going to hold the front of his knee and then I'm able to dig to the heel from there. And so from here, um, I want to have a little bit early on the heel, but I mean, 
better safe than sorry. But ideally what I was trying to do was switch from a 50-50 variation into a saddle. I'm um, trying to bring my left leg uh, inside and then try to reinforce my, uh, my right leg over the top. So from here, just my left leg is uh, pummeling to the inside uh, from, uh, for the heel finish there. Just because from uh, this uh, saddle position, we have a much stronger finishing, uh, well, much stronger ability to finish from here, just because we can put a lot more pressure through our partner's knee from there. Especially when my left leg can pummel to the inside and I can reinforce my inside leg uh, over the top there, we have a much stronger back heel from that position and we can put a lot more pressure through our partner's knee. Um, but I was able to, or was that good tap before I was able to make that sort of switch, um, which I'm fortunate for. Like, I'm not going to complain about that at all. So. Yeah, looking to just counter Owen's attempt at an outside ashy, switching to my own heel hook from here, um, which is something that my coach, uh, Lachlan, does to me almost every single time we roll. If I if I play from an outside ashy at all, he's straight away going to be countering with his, uh, his outside Senkaku. Awesome. Well, um, that was perfect again. So at the end of the of the breakdown, I always ask anyone if they've got any sponsors or anything like that that you want to shout awesome. out. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you to my sponsor, uh, Scramble, and then as well as Barefoot. So, yeah, thank you guys for the support. Um, even uh, in these sort of tough times, uh, we're all stuck in quarantine. And... Do you, um, how is the best way for people to get in contact with you? Awesome. Uh, best way to get in contact with me is uh, through Instagram. So I'm on, on Instagram at Jeremy Paul Skinner. Uh, I am on Facebook as well, but I'm not uh, so active there. So best way is through Instagram for sure. Okay. Um, and is that for, for seminars and stuff like that? That's the best way? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So there's also uh, an option there uh, to just send me an email as well if you want to sort of uh, yeah, organise seminars, private lessons through email, but uh, through messages yeah. as well. Okay, perfect. Um, have you got any instructional material out or have you got a YouTube channel yourself that I could link to? Or? Um, just about to um, start a YouTube channel. I'm just, I, I post uh, technique videos on Instagram, but yeah. you're looking to do some longer format stuff through YouTube. Uh, pretty soon as well as a uh, uh, couple of DVDs coming up. Okay, perfect. Well, um, when you've got your channel, send me a link and I'll, I'll um, hit it up as well. I'll link it up. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem at all. Jeremy, thanks so much for this. I really, really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. No problem. Take care. You too, mate. See Thank you, you very much. Bye.